Can everybody hear me? Amanda's like, good. sweet. Good to see everybody. Welcome to Senior Night. Woo! Woo! Something, a new tradition we've been wanting to start. I was, we were going to start this last year, then obviously COVID. So something what we, we want to do, we, we really care about our seniors. One of the things we, at our church is we are family strong here. So we just want to like take a night to like celebrate you guys, the graduates. So the first part of our evening is just really, I, we're, this is just mingling time. So we're going to get our program started in just about 10 minutes or so. So fill your, oh, can't talk. There is dessert over here. So if you want some water, or coffee, punch, the dessert made by Lisa Peterson and Tammy Peterson. So let's give it up for Lisa. Lisa has gone above and beyond to, like, help set up this night. I asked her, like, hey, can you help out with decorations? She's like, sure. I didn't know how much extent she was going to help out. She is like, this is all her and Fayhadia. They just went above and beyond for you guys. So anyway, so anyway, so why don't you guys get up, and you guys can go get some uh, desserts, some water, punch, coffee. Also, there's a photo booth in the area, so families, if you want pictures with your graduate, you can go do that, and we'll get started here in about 10 minutes or so. All right. All right, guys, need everybody to take a seat. We're going to get started here. Woo yeah. So uh, since this is youth group tonight, this is our youth group service tonight, so I thought it would be only appropriate if we started off with some dad jokes. <laughs> Graduation style. These are grad dad jokes. I made sure to do my research uh, like a couple hours ago. All right, here we go. You guys ready? All right, no. What did the Peruvian animal say when he was graduating from high school? I'm so excited to hold my diploma in my hands. Diploma? Diploma, diploma? Nope. What happened when two seniors were sent to detention for making some horrible puns? They were punished. What happened when they found out about the kidnapping in the seniors' auditorium? They woke him up. Kidnapping? He was napping. The kid was napping, so. Uh, why did the high school senior not want to attend his prom? He thought the punchline was going to be too long. Why was the bread senior such a good student? He was always on the honor roll. I know, exactly. <laughs> How long is this? Why did a broom not graduate from high school? He was sweeping in the classes. I'm losing the crowd, so I got to keep wrap this up. All right, where did the ice cream man graduate high school from? Sunday school. What faculty member was friends with all the seniors? The principal. Uh, why did the high school senior chuck his watch out the window? He wished that time would fly. And lastly, you ready? Should we do like 10 more? No. It's like, get off the stage. Yeah. Why do all the students bring ladders after ninth grade? They're in high school now. Ah, yes. And now for something completely different. Well, anyway, once again, we just want to welcome everybody to grad night. Again, we at, our, at Journey Christian Church, we emphasize the importance of family strong. And you guys are a huge part of not just the church family, but you're part of the Revolution Youth family. And so we just want to take this night to celebrate you guys, to honor you, and just to give you some awards. So I thought we'd start off with that. You guys ready for some awards? Yes. So first off... We have Amanda Harris. She's like, what? Who? To Amanda Harris, Best Flannel Award. <laughs> Amanda, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Speech, wow. She was like, that was funny. So Amanda, like every Wednesday night, on point, always comes in with her cap and her flannel shirt. 
And it's great. And she always has her Stranger Things t-shirt on, which is fantastic. It's a great show, right? She's like, what? And she's also a Green Bay Packer fan. Yes, yes. See? But one of the, yes, Packer fans, we got to stick together, man. Right? Harris Clan, let's go. Ugh, let's go. But one of the things I appreciate about Amanda is not just uh, her personality, but also just her worship heart. And the thing is, like, she's not just talented musically. She, when she sings, she's worshiping. And so, Amanda, we are going to miss your presence, your music, your worship heart here on Wednesday night. So we just want to say just thank you. You're awesome. So let's give it up for Amanda. Awesome. Emma Harris. Oh. We have the Focused and Organized Award. So Emma likes to do things on the fly. She likes to, like, do things at the last minute. Was this accurate? She's like, no. She's focused right there. She's like, I will kill you. <laughs> Emma is always focused, always so organized, but yet at the same time, she is also a fellow Packer fan, which is awesome. But also, you too. Just, I love the way you lead worship. And it's anointed. Both you, both you guys, as leaders, you guys are anointed. And it's awesome. And we've been blessed by your gift that you've shared. And it's not just, you, you, you don't do it to perform. You do it because you love Jesus. So, Emma, I'm so excited for you as you go off into the future. So the Focus and Organized Award, Emma Harris. All right. <laughs> Katrina Wozniak. We have the Chiropractor Violinist Award. So Katrina, she mentioned in her uh, student our senior questionnaire that she wants to go into chiropractor science, right? Uh, at Lake Superior College, is that correct? No. Okay, awesome. Not only does she want to do that, she's also very good at the violin. And so we thought, give you the chiropractor science uh, violinist award. But Katrina, I have been blessed to know you and you just have such a sweet presence about you. You're just so such a delight to talk to. And so we are going to miss you here. And we're just very thankful for everything that you've contributed here on Wednesday nights and just being part of this youth family. From the time you, you went to Camp Barnabas with Ben back in the day. So all those memories that you've placed here. So thank you just for the person that you are. So Katrina Wozniak. Mackenzie Johnson. Ow, ow! You! The You Got to Move Award, Mackenzie Johnson. So Mackenzie and I have usually, every time at youth group, she usually says this thing when she gets really annoyed with me when I'm poking, uh, poking fun at her or teasing her. Not maliciously, just in fun. Um, she, she's like, you, you. So it's the you has now like transferred over to you got to move. <laughs> and then her name, Mackenzie, we've called her Mackenzie Marie, even though that's not her middle name. We've also said Mackenzie Luhu when it's Christmas time. But Mackenzie, one of the things that blesses me about Mackenzie, one of my favorite, my favorite memory of Mackenzie was winter retreat two years ago. There's this moment where we're having worship and the, the presence of the Lord is moving and God is working and the students are being touched and encouraged. And I see this one student going over to a leader and I see Mackenzie come over and I'm thinking, oh, Mackenzie must be waiting in line because she wants prayer. And then the student who was getting prayer for Mackenzie's just right there and gives her this big hug. And I just began to, like, cry because I felt like that was such a beautiful picture of the Father's heart of just wrapping us in his arms. So, Mackenzie, I am just so blessed. We're going to miss you. 
on Wednesday nights. It will be a different youth group without you here. You just, your joy, you just, you love people. And it shows. So, Mackenzie Johnson, you got to move award. All right. To the boys. Josiah Thompson. The Smart Dominoes Guy Award. So, Josiah, one of the things I appreciate about Josiah is sometimes, so Josiah, he loves to talk politics. And so I sometimes will just come up to him and just say, like, something, like, he has a political opinion. I know he, like, is very passionate about, and I say the opposite, just to get him riled up and going. And he just looks at me with this very perplexed look, like, who are you? (laughs) But one of the things, just, just I, I really appreciate your authenticity. Like, I appreciate those moments when we're at the warming house or at Common Grounds or wherever, and we talk, and we get in those discussions, and we get to talking about stuff, deep stuff. And I just appreciate your, authentic, your realness and your authenticity. And I appreciate your bluntness, that you just, you call, you call it like you see it. You're, you, don't, you don't beat around the bush. You just, you call it like you see it. So I appreciate that about you, man, and I hope, uh, don't be a stranger. Love to catch up and have coffee again sometime, man. So, Smart Domino's is the guy. He works at Domino's, too. So, and he's not just, he doesn't just work there. He's, like, a manager. So, he's, like, the big kahuna. The manager. Like, not the assistant to the regional manager. Like, the manager. So, all right. So, Josiah Thompson, the Smart Domino's guy. All right. Lucas Bardo. Ooh. So there's a specific inside joke about this, but the I'm on the team award goes to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this started, I think, two winter retreats ago. Two winter retreats ago. I must have made a mistake or I did something, and Lucas and the gang was like, Ed, you're off the team. You're off the team. And, like, so I was trying to work all week just to try to get on the team, and I didn't make the cut. This year, uh, Lucas's affirmation was he made it to the bench. So, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, like, I'm hopefully one day I'll make the team, Lucas. But Lucas is the coach, so, like, eh, he's like, ah. Yeah, Emma's like, eh. Maybe if I get focused and organized, right? <laughs> but uh, yes take notes um but lucas again i just i really appreciate our conversations i enjoy just hanging out you're just like a fun guy just to talk to and hang out with you're just like a chill dude you got like that yeah just but <laughs> but you're just fun to talk to and you're just again you're really real and like i just love our conversations at grounded and talking shop talking about star wars the clone wars nerding out geeking out so um this really Really appreciate you, brother. And so, way to go. So, the I'm on the team award goes to Lucas Bardo. <laughs> All right. Luke Stillwell. Yes. Hype Man Award. So, Luke is our hype man for youth group. So any so this past year at youth group, oftentimes when I say, hey guys, welcome to Revolution Youth Group, like that, exactly. Crickets, no noise. And we have to have this like saying, like, hey, I say hello everybody, and you say, hi, Ed. So and usually the dad jokes don't really get them going. As you saw tonight, we lost air very quickly. So but Luke just is so passionate about this youth group. He just loves just everything about it. He just is invested in making it better. And I appreciate his thoughts and and contributions. That He's been part of our student leadership team for a long time. And he is a leader. Like, he leads by example. He not just does that in here at Youth Group. He does it in Boy Scouts and on the track team and his job. He's a hard, hard worker. 
but he just gets us excited like he wants because he wants other people to get excited. He doesn't just do it for himself. He really wants people to get excited about youth group and more importantly, he wants people to get excited about Jesus. So Luke, I just really appreciate our conversations. I've been had the privilege to coach you. I don't coach you in pole vault, obviously. <laughs> he just cleared 10 feet yesterday, by the way. That's a personal best, right? Personal best, way to go. Let's go. So just so proud of you, buddy, and I'm so excited. You're going to do great things, and so way to go, man. So the Hype Man Award, Luke Stellwell. <laughs> All right, lastly, Isaiah Mananin. <laughs> Woo! We got the authentic army runner guy. Yeah. So one of the things, uh, Isaiah, he likes to run, of course. He runs for Proctor, the other side. Those rails across the tracks, exactly. No, but we really love you, man. Like, we, I, we pre I appreciate just being able to play with you on Saturday nights on worship team. And the thing is, like, you just, you're just genuine. So it's like you're just very real, and also you, just, you have a worshiper's heart. And like you're really passionate about Jesus, and you don't, you don't hide that. It just like you just it, kind of just flows out of you, just like how you treat people, how you walk, how you interact with people. I see it at track meets. I see it on Saturday nights, and just and also you're going into you already kind of did army stuff last summer, and you're going back again, right? To not basic, but what else? AIT. Okay. So anyway, I just, I really appreciate our conversations as well. And just being able to talk to you and just be real with you and just, you're just really down to earth and proud of you, man. Really proud of you. So, so the authentic army runner guy, Isaiah Manadan. <laughs> All right. Can I steal that program? <laughs> I should know this. All right. Next up. We're going to hear, you guys are going to get to hear from, not just me now, you get to hear from your leaders. Dun, dun, dun. So, Sarah Faust has something to say. Uh, I have a verse that I want to share with you guys and a couple words to go with it. Um, this is Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Um, as hard as you think life has been, I promise you, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's never going to be as easy as it has been. Um, life is going to happen. Hard stuff is going to happen. There's going to be lots of twists and turns. There's going to be amazing things. You all are going to do amazing things because of what is inside of your heart. But life is real, and it's going to get hard, and I want you to remember your faith and that you can always come home to that, no matter what that might mean. If it means coming home to church, if it means opening your Bible again after a long time, if it means finding fellowship, just remember when those twists and turns get really hard that that's, that's home, and that's where you're strongest, and that's where you're the best watered, and that's where you cannot fail. Love you guys. Uh, I just wanted to share uh, a word of advice that was given to me. Uh, this was before college, but this is something that I definitely uh, was constantly reminded of during college. And Pastor Hollis told me this many years ago. He said, remember this, short-term sacrifice, long-term success. So I know you guys going to college, it's going to be nuts. And when things are hard, just remember that, short-term sacrifice, long-term success. So when, if the extra studying that you guys need to do or the extra effort that you guys need to put into it, that in the end, it is going to be worth it. And, and, and another aspect, too, that, that I constantly use that same short-term sacrifice, long-term success, that you can put that into your spiritual walk as well. Um, so with college, there's going to be a lot of new temptations, a lot of new stuff that's going to be put into your life or shoved in your life. So that short, 
short-term temptation that you can say no to where the Holy Spirit's saying, ah, maybe you shouldn't go hang out with that group of people or go to that party or whatever it is. That long-term victory is going to be awesome. So, yes, short-term sacrifice, long-term success. Hi. Um, my only, I guess, advice or encouragement is to really, as, as you now have this time to, you've been moving away from, you know, maybe your family because you've been growing up, and now you're really in this time where you're going to make your own choices about who you hang out with and what you do, and all of that can be really fun and, like, freeing, but also a lot of responsibility. So um, I don't want to sound like a stuck record, but really your faith is a huge part of that because you have the, the chance and the um, challenge of making it your own, and some of those ideas might be different from where your parents are at with things, but, you know, you can still keep them involved, but you're still going on in your own way and doing your thing, and make sure to have fun, but also, like, who you have friends with, who you surround yourself with is going to do so much in who you can become. So, so excited to see you all step out. And so step out well and boldly and with enthusiasm. Hey, guys. <laughs> I thought about it earlier, and now I'm just not going to say what I was going to say because this is, doesn't make sense now. So <laughs> anyway, um, I'm really proud of all of you, and uh, when I started this, I had no clue how much actually I was going to be changed by you. Um, I even find myself, if I'm down in my basement alone drumming and I screw up really bad or can't get something, would I say what I want to say in front of the kids, and then I won't say it. So it's, you're changing me without knowing it, and I, and I appreciate that. Um, when you go off to do whatever you're going to do, college for most of you, I'd imagine, military, some... You're going to see and hear things you may have not seen or heard before, and there's going to be people that you probably wouldn't even, I don't know, want to be around mostly, most of the time. But just remember, darkness flees from the light, and just be that light, and push, and don't back down, don't give in. There's going to be temptations, and it's just those split-second decisions that can either make you or break you. Um, so just... Uh, I don't know. I, w I wanted to say have fun, but after that, I don't know how I could say that. <laughs> but yeah, have fun. Love you. Okay, I'm going to start with a couple verses. Um, the first one is Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. Because the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. In Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Um, something that I didn't know, even though I grew up in the church and went to youth group on a weekly basis, was how important it was to be intentional in your faith and what that means. So if you don't know what that means, I looked up the definition. The definition of intentional is done on purpose, deliberate. So if you are going to have an intentional faith, it means you are going to intentionally walk with Christ through getting plugged in, being in small groups, praying every day, um, reading God's word, and um, having fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, it is so important to remember those things going into this next stages in your life and on your journey um, because it's kind of, it is up to you whether your faith flourishes or, you know, if it stays sag stagnant like mine kind of did and I kind of had to learn the hard way um, and go through some tough hurts. And so um, I haven't gotten to know you guys like for as long as some other people that are leaders here, but in a way I kind of feel like you're a little our babies and we're the mama birds and the papa birds and we just want to see you guys do well and so um just be intentional and and stay plugged in um you know reach out we're here for you guys we love you guys so so much so much and we would be willing to go grab coffee or go watch a movie or hang out bonfire anytime so um just wish you guys well and congratulations
All right. Hi. Um, first, I want to say, uh, those of you that have been on worship and been through school worship and stuff, you guys have grown a ton, and I'm proud of you guys. Um, we are a ascending church, so as you're going, you're also getting sent out. So, um, God's got a lot of great things to do through you as as you go. Um, I guess Sarah already covered what, what the main thing I was going to do. So, um, I would just say, make sure you're getting plugged in. Um, a church, a group somewhere, um, but don't fill up your schedule so much that um, you don't have time for yourself and God. Um, so, yeah, we should always leave room for that. Um, my word of wisdom, Josh's is good. Mine's kind of silly. Um, don't buy a new car when new tires are all you need. Okay, guys, I'm not your leader anymore. Lucky you, right? <laughs> I came tonight. They said I was a roast. I'm like, all right. Then they said I had to be nice. <laughs> Impossible. I probably am the leader that has been with you the longest. I have watched you grow from this to this and some of you to this. <laughs> I have enjoyed the time I've spent with you, watching you grow. Some days I was like, oh, will these kids never grow up? <laughs> um, Emma and Amanda loved to torture me because I could never keep their names straight. Even though I knew who they were, I could not keep their names straight. Bob and Fred. <laughs> so I'd say, hey, Bob. She's like, no, I'm Fred. <laughs> um, other than that, each and every one of you, I have watched you grow and mature and become wonderful young people. And I am looking forward to seeing what you do with your lives and how you serve God. Even Katrina, who is like, does that girl speak? <laughs> We've had conversations. I'm like, whoa, she's grown. <laughs> um, so I just want to tell you guys that keep that spirit even though the world will try to beat it out of you, <laughs> they will drag you down. Remember that God is with you at all times. Um, if I could remember, remember the whole poem, I would say it, but I love the footstep poem that says, why weren't you with me, God? And he tells them, I was carrying you for that last however long it was. Um, so if you don't know the poem, read it. It's very good. And I just want to tell you how proud I am of you guys and Looking forward to see what you do with your lives. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Emma and Amanda have, are going to share a song with us. So sit back and watch. Just finish 
job. Great song. Hey, give him another round of applause. Let's go. Super good. What's that song called? What's that? All right. Oh, awesome. So this part of our night is kind of like reflection. So, so surprise, you guys get to each give a 10-minute talk. <laughs> Looks like, yes. So I just want to, I'm going to pass the mic around and just, why don't you just share us your name and then what future plans maybe, and then one fun memory from youth group. Mackenzie, do you want to start? She's like, oh, you can start. I'm, I'm Mackenzie and... I, w I want to go to work and work with kids and I love the games at this group. <laughs> I'm 
I'm not giving a 10 minute talk. <laughs> My name is Katrina Wozniak. Um, I'm graduating from high school, but along with that, I'm also getting my Associate of Arts degree. So I'm excited for that. Uh, and then this next year, I was accepted into a science program. So I'm going to be doing that about 40 hours a week during the summer. And then it switches to about 12 hours a week during the school year. It's working in a lab and learning how to do research. So I'm pretty excited for that, but also nervous. And then this next year, I'm taking mainly science classes from, again, like Superior College. And then after that, um, I'm, I'm open. I'll see how this year goes. My two main ideas right now are either going into chiropractic science or a a degree in English. I'm not sure yet. And my favorite memory from youth group, I really enjoyed Camp Barnabas and just growing closer to the people who were on that trip. But also another one was just when I first started coming here. Everyone was so welcoming and friendly. <laughs> and it was a really stark contrast to the youth group I had been attending before that. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> so that was a really big deal to me at the time. And yeah, I think that's all I have. As surprising as, as it may seem, Katrina brought me out of my shell. <laughs> because my parents told me I had to talk to new people, so I chose her. <laughs> she was targeted. I don't know how much of a choice she had, but anyways, now she's stuck with us. Um, my name's Amanda Harris, and I have been accepted into UMD for the fall semester. Um, I'm planning on finishing up my generals and then maybe transferring somewhere else afterwards and uh, probably getting my degree in English um, most likely not teaching that would be a <laughs> that would be a fiasco um, oof, my favorite youth group memories I've been in this youth group since I was well I've been in this church since I was five so I've been part of this youth group since I was geez in fifth grade um, so a lot of you people I've known for pretty much my entire life so thank you for coming um, <laughs> Favorite youth group memory was probably with Big Ben. Um, I have a few, but I'll choose two main ones. The first was Pine Ridge. We went to the reservation down in South Dakota. The bus broke down multiple times there and back. Um, there was no AC. There was a bunch of boys, too, so that made it worse. Girls, too. <laughs> it, was, it was a pretty bad mix of both. Um, but yeah, we had lots of fun. I got to know people very much. Um, <laughs> and then my second favorite, youth group. Uh, memory would be Camp Barnabas. Oh boy, that was fun and stressful, but mostly fun. Um, my camper tried to throw a fan out of the window. She ran away multiple times into the woods. Um, yeah, it was just, it was an experience, and I'm, I learned a lot. So that's pretty much it. Here you go. Hi, my name is Emma Harris. Um, she took a lot of my stuff, but that's okay. <laughs> she usually does. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am going to Concordia College in the fall of 2021, and I'm hoping to get into a lot of foreign languages. I've always really loved it, and it's fun to do it um, on a college level and then being taught by someone who knows what they're doing instead of teaching myself all the time. <laughs> Not, like... Not you. I, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, that wasn't intentionally meant towards you. I'm sorry. That sounded really bad, actually. Whoops. Okay. Forget that ever happened. 
Yeah. Favorite youth group memory. Um, yeah, let's move this along. <sighs> Probably the worship team. Um, the people I've gotten to know on the worship team and just the mentors who came alongside me and really encouraged me to step out there. And one of them was Michael Lane, obviously. He's over there. And then his sister, Emily, who isn't here right now, but I was uh, really grateful for their support and really grateful for um, Luke and Rebecca and um, you too. Yeah. <laughs> you too. <laughs> yeah, just um, working together as a team, that was really fun. Yeah. So those memories are really important to me, and I thank you guys for everything. Well, good evening. I was, oh. Awesome. Well, I am Luke Stowell. I have been with this church since it's a long time, actually. Too long to count. Uh, like a lot of people here, I took PSEO for two years, my junior and senior year. Didn't graduate with an AA, but I was going for that bachelor's, so kept a lot of credits for that. Had a great time. It was a blast. Um, but I'm proud to announce I'm going to the University of Minnesota Twin Cities this fall. Super excited. Well, yeah. I'll be in the College of Science and Engineering going for a biology major type thing for a pre-med track. Like, the goal is to go to medical school, kind of shoot for that, see where it goes from there, but I guess we'll see along the way. So I'm very thankful for all the opportunities I've had here and just the experiences. It is amazing. This youth group has grown, it has grown, has shrunk, it has gone up and down, but it has all been good. It's been like a roller coaster, but like a fun roller coaster. And uh, so I have a lot of things to choose from. Like, man, I was on the Barnabas trip as well. I was actually a year younger, and I got put with a... I wasn't supposed to be with someone, because I was a year younger than that, but I got put with someone. That was like a big freak-out moment for me. I get to think, like, yep, you're not actually doing, you know, the other parts. You're putting with the person. You know, we're going to expect you to take care of this person. At 14 or 13, I was not ready for that. Uh, I also went for Ignite conference for the student leadership team, and that was a blast. Got to see a comedian, got to experience that, learn from that. Uh, I've been with the student leadership team meeting for as long as it started. I was there when they first started, and it has been great since, and a lot of experiences I've learned. I know I had a fun experience at the Namakog and tubing that. We opened up a tarp once to get firewood, and there was a giant snake right on the wood. We, didn't we just shut the trap and ran. We, we didn't mess with that after that. It was a big snake, trust me. We didn't know what it was. It was not a gardener snake. And uh, so there's a lot of experiences like that. Probably my favorite. Uh, All-time favorite is Winter Retreat. <laughs> Love that place. Yeah, can we give them some excitement for that? Winter Retreat is like our own little like cove to go to. It's like our safe place for that, where we get to grow as a youth group. Because fun activities with other churches are great, but this is a time where we come together as a youth group more than ever. I meet new people every year. Every year I go, I meet someone I never knew before and start a friendship with some of them. And it's amazing. I've been there about eight or nine times now. I was starting to go when I was before youth group. It was a blast. Best time there. Snowboarding hill never gets old. All of that excitement. And even just the chapel. Like, it is the purest form of worship you can get. And I just, it was one of my favorite memories for that. Another one, I'm going to conclude with this, is I got the experience of giving a sermon. To me, that was very just inspirational. To be able to share experience I had, just idea I had to the youth group, to be able to share what I had in my heart, and to touch the lives of other people, and to be able to pour into them, because it, that's what it's all about. We're building together as a youth group. We're coming together. We're all coming at this together as a team, as a group. So any little movement we can do together to push forwards, it helps. And the, the student takeover night was just phenomenal. Anyone have fun? Yeah? Excitement? It was grand, and I can't wait for the next one, so I'll pass it off with that. Hi, everybody. Is this work? It works. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, I've only been to this youth group like maybe four or five times. Uh, so, I, unlike Luke, who's been here for like four or five years, um, <laughs> maybe longer. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I, all right, yeah, my name is Isaiah. I am going to the latter half of my army training. I'm going for infantry, so it'll be there. I'll be there for a while. Um, but my goal was to, or my plan was to start nursing school at the University of North Dakota in the fall, but I won't get back until the middle of September, and so I asked them if I could start in the spring instead, and they said, yeah, sure. 
So that's what I'll be doing. Um, let's see. Uh, my favorite memories of this youth group. Uh, well, the first one that came to mind was when Ed's dad came, and I saw on Instagram that he was coming, and I was like, wait, Ed loves dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and his dad is coming. <laughs> like, Ed, you're going to get out dad joked. And, like, <laughs> and they were really funny. <laughs> uh, that, I don't know, that was just a really great thing that just popped into my mind. It was like, it's, it's Ed and dad jokes, and dad, Ed, dad joke, you know, it was, it was fantastic, um, I guess, yeah, like, I've been, like, going to this church on Sundays for a while, and it was just nice to, like, come back here, and, like, come to, start coming to youth group this year, um, well, here, and I, I don't know, there's been a lot of times where I've talked with Ed, like, at cross-country track meets, um, it's just been really nice to, like, be like, hey, I know that guy, um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, I think that's all for me, so, Lucas. Well, my name is Lucas Bardo. I do not have any tentative plans for next year, but I do have it set up to go road tripping through Europe with my foreign exchange students. So that is uh, definitely going to be a trip. Um, I'd have to say my two favorite memories from youth group, starting off, uh, boys lock-in. That was a very interesting experience uh, between shooting each other with Nerf guns, going to movies, uh, slicing my finger open while making uh, foam swords, uh, playing video games and just having really interesting talks at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'd say my second was winter retreat two years ago when the team was founded. Um... <laughs> Besides just having uh, a really good group of friends there, uh, we bruised our hands playing Taco Cat the entire weekend. Um, yeah, Ed, you might get on the team. We'll, we'll see about it. But yeah, those are my favorite experiences from this youth group. All righty, so my name is Josiah Thompson. Um, like a few of the other kids up here, I have been doing PSEO for the last two years, so I'll be graduating high school with my Associates of Arts degree from Lake Superior College. Uh, shave a little money off of my bachelor's. Uh, my future plans, I'll be going to Hamlin University down in Minneapolis and majoring in criminology and potentially double majoring in international business. Um, and then from there, going to law school and um, ideally uh, get into a federal prosecutor position with the De Department of Justice. Um, one of my favorite, oh. <laughs> uh, I got a few memories from this place. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess one of my favorite memories is probably from camp, playing Gaga Ball back in, other than like junior high camp where I was like 14 and that's all I did. And I feel like Luke probably, did, yeah, like there's a bunch of, so all we did was play Gaga Ball. All, that was it. Bruised hands, you know, scuffed knees, bloody knuckles. Um, and then winter retreat, it's always just, it's always just something else every time. There's always something that just happens. I don't know if there's a specific, I think, I don't remember how many years back it was, but there was, it was like 60 degrees all weekend long, and there was this giant 30 foot puddle, like it was like 30 feet long at the bottom of the tubing hill. This puddle was like four inches deep. And, uh, I did that with a couple of friends for like four hours and we were all just like soaking wet and had to go change and stuff before chapel, but. Yeah, I think that was probably one of my favorite memories, so, yeah. Awesome. So, parents, I know I didn't ask you this ahead of time, but I just want to open up the mic now. Any parents or any family members that like to share anything? Seth would love to speak. All right. Shane. I'm really nervous. Is this thing on? I'm really nervous in front of people, so. Uh, <laughs> tonight, uh, uh, I want to talk about 
Hype Man. <laughs> Hype Man knows who I'm talking about. Hype Man started life with an immediate helicopter ride to Duluth, where he spent a week in NICU with a lung infection that sort of cleared up. And that was a, a sh- the shyest little boy you ever saw. He would be the one that would be the, you know, hiding behind the leg with somebody who was trying to talk to him behind his mother's leg. He was pretty shy. And I just want to recognize a few things that, you know, as I look around this room tonight, there's some, you were instrumental in helping to transform that little shy kid into hype man. (laughs) You know, I can think of uh, uh, CC. Some of you were in uh, classical conversations with us. And to think that, you know, him dressing up as Davy Crockett giving some little speech was instrumental in him coming out of his shell to become hype man. He, he uh, somehow attracted the name, uh, the, the nickname of Luker. That's his short uh, nickname. The long nickname is Lukerville. I, I don't know where that came from or what, but it seems to fit. So the other things that Luke has done is, uh, is in scouting. And as I look around this room, I see some people here in scouting. They, they will remember the Porcupine Mountains trip. Do you remember that? Porcupine Mountains, Luke, Lucas, yeah. You know, that, that was another experience that helped transform that little shy boy into hype man. Or going to Philmont, and somehow we had this stupid idea that we were going to go to New Mexico, go on a 12-day hike, 80-some miles. It's even labeled super strenuous. Hey, that's the first time. Let's pick the super strenuous one. So yeah, going on a super strenuous hike for 12 days in the in this backcountry of New Mexico mountains helped transform hype man into that. And let's not forget the youth group the church that he's been involved in with his entire life here, uh, you all, every one of you who has, who has invested into this youth group, who has invested into this church, not only hype man there, but all of these are the result of your investment in this church, your dedication, showing up, putting a smile on. I want to thank you for doing that. I want to thank you for your dedication, your relentless pursuit to see that these young kids can grow up and have the experiences that they've talked about. Thank you. Awesome. Good word. Anybody else? Oh, Lee, let's go. I got two, so I feel a little extra pressure. I, I'll start with a little humor. I think it's kind of funny that you're remembered for that Stranger Things t-shirt. I think that thing's been washed like three times in the last three years, so. <laughs> Sorry about that, people. Uh, <laughs> and Emma, <laughs> organized and focused. Oh, we love you. We love you. In all your OCD ways, we love you. <laughs> But I, uh, as, as these two awesome girls' dads, it's, it's been, uh, I mean, like, I mean, I don't know how many Sundays we've got to watch them worship, and we almost cry every single time, and, and I don't know how many times I've had parents come up and go, aren't you proud of them, and, and I cry when they say that, and I can't help but say yes, and I just want you guys to know, I mean all of you, but I'm kind of focusing on those two right now, um, we're honored. We are honored to have gotten to be your parents. It could have been anybody. We're not genetically, uh, I don't know if you knew that or not. I know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yeah. Um, That's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I was just like. Um, So, like, like we waited a long time. Like, you only waited nine months. (laughs) We waited a long time to be their mom and dad. And, um, but I don't know how God, well, I know he did, but I mean, I, to get to be your parents is, is pretty awesome. And, um, I, I have to thank him because we had no control over that, as you know. So, um, but we couldn't, there's no way genetics could make two people love you two more. So just know that always. And then uh, for you guys, all of you up there, it's more than a prayer. 
It's a surrender. Just remember that. It's, it's, it's more than a prayer. It's, it's losing your life for him, okay? Awesome. One more? Yeah. First of all, um, I want to say thanks, Ed, first for asking Chris and I if we ever wanted to host a youth group. It was uh, on a whim, and it's been a big blessing to get to know a lot of you that have been at our house, around the bonfire, snow blowing a trail back to our fire pit, <laughs> having pizza and s'mores and popcorn and stuff spill. What? Yes, hot cocoa spills on the carpet. That's all good. But um, we've really enjoyed getting to know you. And you seniors, you're a big blessing to us um, for loving on Mackenzie and accepting her into your youth group and just showing her God's love. Thank you, Ed, for the same and just loving on all of these kids the way that you do. Um, you have a big heart for ministry, and we really appreciate that. And um, I just wish all of you the best. Don't be strangers. Our house is always open. I will make popcorn or throw pizzas in or have coffee, because you all know I love coffee. And um, just thank you, parents, for not maybe not knowing Chris and I, but letting your student come and hang out at our house. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm probably going to cry, but that's okay. Um, so Eric and I were able to go to um, winter retreat for five years. We, we couldn't go this year because we weren't uh, work-related stuff. But we had so much fun with all of you guys at winter retreat and getting to know you all. And um, Taco Cat <laughs> competitions. If you have not played that, you have to play taco cat goat cheese pizza it's the best um so thanks for letting us uh, be part of all of those weekends and um just embracing um what eric had to share with you i never did anything real uh, momentous or monumental but just was fun to know you guys and hang out and do meals and go snowshoeing and um so we look forward to your next crew. So we appreciate you giving them the, the rules and the ropes. And I just want to um, say congratulations to Lucas. Um, someone pointed out to me that on his, one of his Snapchat things, I don't know, he has a friend in every country of the world. So... Um, Maybe we won't see him for a while. <laughs> but he's a great kid. Um, we love having him around, and it's been fun. Jacob's been home with us, too, so we've kind of got to go back to being a family for another year. So um, we expect an invitation from wherever you end up living. Okay. Okay, I'm Ron Thompson, for those of you that might not know me. So, uh, Josiah, I just want to tell you, Shannon, my wife, couldn't be here tonight. She came down with something, right, just hours before this, basically, and so she couldn't come. Uh, but we just want you to know how much we love you and how proud of you we are. Ever since he was way down here, I can remember... Uh, Shannon's dad being at our house and we'd be working on something, a washing machine, a dishwasher or something. Josiah would be coming around, doing, doing. He was always wanting to know what we were doing or whatever. And, and now the, the idea of him going to college and going to be a lawyer, I do not doubt for one second that you will achieve that. Because he's, for at least two years, he's been telling us what 
his plans are. You know, a lot of times, I know when I was a kid, well, what are you going to do when you graduate? I don't know. Go to college, I guess, you know. No, he was, I'm going to go be a lawyer and eventually get on the Supreme Court. I'm like, praise God, we need somebody with that kind of a background on the Supreme Court. So <laughs> I just, you know, and I don't doubt that someday, you know, he'll, he'll make it. So I just, I'm so proud of you. And, and even, you know, in the last year, I remember last, last, like a year ago or whatever, he was working for a cleaning company, you know, cleaning banks and whatever. And then he, he got tired of that. And yeah, I'm going to apply at Domino's and I'm going to apply at Menards. And so he started working at both those places. Well, then he finally realized that, well, Menards was way in West Duluth. Domino's is just down the block here, a couple blocks away, and they're paying more than I, you know, I'm going to go work for Domino's. And then the next thing I know, he's the manager. You know, so he just, he sets his mind to things and he gets it done. So that's why I have no doubt that he's going to be a successful lawyer someday. So very proud of you. And we love you. All right. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. This is the way. Yes. All right. So there have been a lot of adults speaking. Um, I, I felt I might want to, te yeah, technically speaking, whatever. Anyway, I, I thought I'd give it a change of pace, seeing as I am a college student and a good chunk of you are going to college. Um, I'll keep this, I'll make this quick. But anyway. Um, <laughs> So, parties are lame. They suck. I'm just going to tell you that right out the bat. Like, they, you, don't, you don't need to go to them. You just need a couple really good friends. That's all you need. Uh, study hard, but I have no doubt that all of you are going to do great in your uh, academic endeavors because you're all smart and awesome people. Um, but when I was sitting there and, um, you know, listening to all these people speak, uh, I was uh, reminded of my own graduation uh, and uh, how lucky I am to have all of you people and how lucky you are to have them as well. But um, since my major is an English major, I was reminded of a poem that I memorized, which I have since lost the memorization of, so I'm not gonna, not gonna do that. But um, I, I think it might be pertinent to uh, moving on in life, I guess. So this is Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. I think you might appreciate it. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. The wise men at their end know dark is right. Because their words forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage rage against the dying of the light. I hope you remember that. Let it be a lesson to you as you progress. Do not go gentle. Awesome. Good words, Jacob. All right. I know we're running a little bit long, but this is such a fun night. So I wanted to ask Pastor Hollis to share something, because I think it's important that you don't only hear from the youth leaders, you hear from your pastor. So I'm going to give it up here to Pastor Hollis. Hey, um, thank you guys for letting me talk just for a second. I just want to add my affirmation um, and just say you guys are awesome and you're going to do great. And I'm sure you all have it figured out what your future holds, whether you're going to stay single or get married or have a family or go to school or what job you're going to have or whether you're going to stay in town or get out of Dodge. I'm sure you have your future perfectly planned. You're going to step right into God's will. And um, as I was thinking about that, I'm being facetious, obviously. Um, as I was thinking about that, uh, there's actually a verse in the Bible that says this. It's the second half of Romans 12, too. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's perfect 
uh, good and pleasing will is. That's the verse. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's good, perfect, and pleasing will is. Don't you think it would be helpful to know what's before the then? <laughs> this is a verse that's on the back of Tom's T-shirt. Uh, so if you forget it, you can check with Tom. It says this, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's perfect, good, and pleasing will is. And so the key is, and this is maybe simplistic, but you're going to do one of two things as you step forward into adulthood. You'll either be conforming or transforming. And if you want to walk in God's will, you need to be transforming. Okay? Conforming is the patterns of this world. That's easy. You'll do that naturally. That's human nature. Just, you know, follow your flesh or the things that are just in front of you. That's conforming to the people that are around you. Transforming happens by the renewing of your mind with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul's saying. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you will be able to approve God's perfect, good, and pleasing will. So you need to then, in your mind is where you make decisions. It's where you form opinions and it's where you take the next step. It happens first in your head. And this is what Paul is saying. If you want to walk in God's will, let him penetrate your mind. Let God penetrate your thinking. Let him help you form your opinions. Make your decisions. Because then you'll be able to test and approve what God's good, perfect, and pleasing will is. So that's my challenge to you. Walk in step with the Spirit by first allowing God into your head. Asking him, help me in the way that I think, in the decisions that I make, in the opinions that I form. God, help me. And if you do that, you're going to be a success no matter if you get married, what school you go to, what job you take. You will please God. And that is ultimately what I want to be able to say when I end my life, I did my best to please God. And so God bless you. I think you're going to do it. And um, it is true. You're surrounded by a ton of support. All of the effort that went into making this night special is because you are loved and you are cared for and you are appreciated and you are affirmed. And I hope if you stay in town, Journey will still be where you come and hang out and fellowship. Okay? God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. So... I have a two-hour speech prepared for you all. What's that? Fantastic. Julie's like, yes! So, this has been a fun night, hasn't it? It has been fun. So, I just want to leave you guys with this. This is kind of our, my devotion I have for you guys. So, Deuteronomy chapter 31. There's a story where Moses brings the Israelites to the Jordan River. And in this story... Moses tells the Israelites, here's the, here's the bad news. I can't go into the promised land with you. But here's the good news. God's going to be with you. Don't be afraid, discouraged. The Lord God is with you wherever you go. Then he turns to Joshua. And, you know, what probably wasn't a bigger crowd like this, but it was probably, you know, tens of thousands, millions of people. In front of everybody, Moses tells Joshua, you're the guy. You're going to lead my people. You're going to lead our people into the promised land. And you can imagine Joshua's reaction. Probably like some people were probably thinking, yes, Moses is no longer there. We are so tired of Moses. And some people are like, what? Oh, the focus and organize the plan. This isn't part of the job description. Right, Emma? No? <laughs> She's like, what? What are you saying? Anyway. So Moses basically tells Joshua this. I can't go across the Jordan. I can't lead them there. It's your turn now. And that's kind of my point is your, it's your turn now. It's your turn. You have God is every season of your life is preparation for the next one. Right? You guys have been in this season called high school. And you've been working really hard at academics. You've been involved in sports, Boy Scouts, working a job. You're involved in numerous and numerous activities. And you've been busy. And you've been working just 
you've been you've been preparing for this moment, and you've God has placed specific people in your life to be influential to you in the good times and in the bad times, and specific people like your parents, right? They have raised you. Every parent, I think, does the best they can. They, there is no roadmap, right? Parents, there is no roadmap. There is no like this is how you raise identical twins. Julian Lee's like, we have that. <laughs> there is no roadmap of raising a violinist, right? There is no roadmap for raising Mackenzie, right? She's like, yes, there is. There is no roadmap. Each parent, each of your parents have done the best of their ability to raise you right, to raise you in the ways of the Lord. But just like Moses, there comes a point where they have to let you go. Not that, that you can never talk to them anymore. Not that they're not going to be involved in your life. Your moms are like, oh, we are going to be involved in your life. But there comes a point where the dynamic shift, right? No longer are they dressing you, getting ready for school, whether you're homeschool, public school. They're getting you ready or they're driving you to youth group practice. Now you're the ones driving. And now they're, they're excited for you. And your younger siblings like more Cocoa Puffs for me. Stop stealing my cereal, right? No younger siblings in the room want to say anything? Isaiah? Isaiah's like, yep. <laughs> So your parents are excited for you, but also it's bittersweet because you guys are no longer children. You're adults now. And so your parents, you par your parents have brought you figuratively to the Jordan River, and they're saying it's your turn. It's your turn now. It's your turn to make those decisions. When Sunday morning comes around and you want to hit snooze, like, ah, oh, I could sleep in. It's your turn now, though, to decide Am I going to go to church in the morning? Am I, am I going to go? Am I going to get plugged in? It's your turn now to seek out Christian community. And I cannot emphasize enough how important that is. I know for me, when I went to UWS, it's as liberal as it gets. But my best friends, to this day, I met in crew at a Bible study. And so I would just encourage you, don't just wait for community to find you. Seek it out. Go out and seek it. Because you will find something amazing. Friendships that may last a lifetime. And you know, the, you know me, I like to speak in movie quotes. You know, it goes without saying. You know, with great power comes great responsibility, right? With adulthood comes more responsibility. Yay! Yes, adulthood. It's hard. It sometimes stinks. It's like gone are the days like, I have to wash my own dishes? <laughs> what is this? I have to do my own laundry? <laughs> what? And like, you're probably like, we, we've been doing this, Ed. We're, we're ahead of the game. Okay, just was just checking. Here's the good news, though. This is an exciting time for you guys, but also it can be feel, feel overwhelming, stressed. Here's the good news. It's what the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 31. God says to Joshua, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. God is with you, and you're not alone. No matter the highs and lows, you have people in your corner this room, you have, you have youth group leaders that pray, are, are praying for you, that care about you. You have parents, family members sitting in this room that are praying for you, rooting you on, cheering for your successes. We are so excited to see what God wants to do in your life. And the thing is, like, enjoy this new season. Enjoy it. Yes, you get some more responsibility, but also enjoy it. And, and what, what I would say and encourage you, try new things. Try new things. And you know what? Enjoy failure. Not exactly that we go looking for failure, but enjoy it because sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. You're going to make mistakes. It's called growing up. It's called growing pains. You make mistakes. It's true. I checked online somewhere. But here's, the, here's what I want to encourage you to. Is whether you know what you're going to do or whether you're still like, I kind of know what I want to do, but I'm not sure. Okay, whether you know what you do, what you're going to do, or, what, or you don't. Just remember Jobs and professions, they're good, they're awesome. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't chase that or pursue that. Jobs and professions will change. Jesus lasts forever, okay? Jesus lasts forever. So my heart and prayer for you guys is that you would keep and seek Jesus. Keep pursuing him. Don't, never stop going after him. Don't lose that, amen? Keep chasing Jesus because he won't stop chasing you, all right? And I just want to say, 
as your youth director in this short time I've gotten to know you guys these last two years, I've been blessed. I've been very blessed to know you all. And just the deposits that you've made in my life and the deposits you've made in this group, just with worship and just your laughter, your humor, just your personalities, everything that you've contributed, I have been blessed to know you guys. And you will always have a home. You will always be considered part of the family. So Isaiah, even though you've only shown up a couple times, you are part of the Revolution Youth family. So whether you've been here for the first time or the hundredth time, you're part of the family, right? And I just want to just, for me, as your youth director, I have to let you go. This is your figurative River Jordan. Or like, your place is beyond this place now. Not that you're not, you're, whenever you're on spring break or you're coming home for a visit, you're more than welcome to stop by. But here's the deal. God is with you. And he will never leave you or forsake you. And I'm just so excited to see how God writes your story. Because the Lord is a pretty good storyteller. He likes to write good stories. So I'm just so proud of you all. And I don't, I'm not just proud of you. I love you guys. I mean that. I love you guys. And so I'm just very thankful for all of you and how you've blessed my life and blessed this place. So this is how I want to wrap up the night. So I'm going to ask you all to stand up, come to the front, and I'm just going to invite uh, parents to come up next to your student. And we're going to just take these last few moments just to pray. What's up? Family members as well. You can come up there too, Silas. Family members. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's pray. Youth groupers, we're going to keep separate, but we're going to raise our hands and cover these guys in prayer like we are told to do. So, Father God, we just thank you for the short period of time that we've had with these students. God, we love them so much, and we know you love them more, and so we ask for your protection and your blessing you know what steps they're going to take. And so we just ask that you go with them, that you are with them every step, that you are bringing out their best, that you are teaching them lessons, and that they just always remember that they are so loved by you and so loved by us here at Journey. We are so grateful for them, and we know that they're going to do awesome, amazing things for the world and for your kingdom. Thank you so much, Lord. So, Father God, we just want to say thank you for just a wonderful night, God. Thank you, Lord, for each and every single one of these seniors, God. Thank you for Amanda. Thank you for Emma, Katrina, Mackenzie, Lucas, Josiah, Luke, Isaiah. God, thank you, Lord, for every single one of them, God. And, Lord, as they go forth, God, as they um, venture off into new territory, God, thank you, Lord, that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And so, Father, God, as it says in your word, may the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Let's give a big round of applause for our seniors one more time. Awesome. So that's the night. So thank you. A quick shout out again one more time to Lisa Peterson. She worked her tail off to set this up for us. Um, yeah, have some more dessert and punch. And then there's a photo booth. Don't forget there's a photo booth. So feel free to get your photo over there. And that's it. Thank you for coming. <laughs>